We're here at the Raleigh Art Expo having a fabulous time talking to a lot of great artists and I'm sitting here with another fantastic artist, Larry Poncho Brown. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Man. Look, tell me a little bit about how you got started in this whole world of art. Well, I was a, uh, I went to a vocational high school where I learned sign writing, which is painting signs. So that basically paid my way through college. And uh, eventually on the way I studied graphic design. I was a closet illustrator. So I stopped doing graphic design and went into illustration. And from there, I, I decided to take a chance on doing my, my fine artwork. It was probably back in the early 80s. Okay. And so I started a distribution company. I started publishing my own work and the works of 16 other artists that were in the Baltimore, Washington area. And uh, that's how I pretty much got started. But I, I started my first art business when I was 17. Wow. I've been a, a professional artist now for 32 years. 32 years? Yes. So now, when you, when you decided to get into this field of art, it was just a dream or vision, or like you said, it kind of progressed from one thing to another? It progressed. I mean, you know, our awareness is changing. Uh, my dad was a printer, so it wasn't uh, foreign for me to, to look at some of the options that a lot of artists probably wasn't looking at that time. I was uh, very familiar with the printing process and I was familiar with the technology and the advances that were made in technology. Right. So it was more right. affordable for us to do printing of work and it was also, it made it more accessible. So when I came along, the accessibility factor really kicked in. Gotcha. And so gotcha. I, I, I really, that really pushed me ahead, uh, being familiar with the printing processes. Now, with your art, would you say it comes from a certain place for you? Or do you sit down and, and create a complete thought, you know, for your artwork? How does it work for you? Our artists have a different perspective. I just shut up, sit down, turn the music on and paint. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I let it flow the way it's supposed to flow. I mean, I don't take credit for the work either. I don't know how it's going to start. I don't know how it's going to end. The creator right. gave me this as a form of therapy, really. Right. I right. was the one that said, hmm, I might be able to make a little business out of this. <laughs> so, and that's really the difference between most of the artists. Most of us do this from a whole different place. Um, and uh, because of accessibility and uh, culture and you put those two together uh, and talk about the Cosby show when they started airing black artwork for the first time and we subliminally started seeing it and wanting it and could go to the mall and get it. That was the biggest revolution in art that's happened in, in, in 20 years. I mean, if this had happened back in the 70s when uh, Ernie Barnes was on Good Times and it was accessible, this same movement may have started back in the 70s. Okay. So technology is really at the backbone of, of, of the biggest change. When you make it accessible to the masses, that changes everything. And then you started adding other features like the web, and now, now we're global instead of regional. That changes everything. That changes the whole perspective. Yeah. So most of us have, have taken the time to try to brand our names. We traveled all over the country from California, Chicago, Atlanta, Florida, uh, really taking it in the community and showing it to people. So. Um, Cities like Raleigh is very important. We got major shows happening in Atlanta, New York, California, Chicago. I can name the whole Eastern East Seaboard, Coast. but uh, this Southern Quarter is a very, very forgotten quarter. But a lot of people now are migrating to this quarter, right. so you're going to find a lot of people trying to do more cultural events in this area. And so that's my real reason for being here. Well, let me ask you this: since you hit it right on the head, if someone wanted to get in contact with you about your art or any of the artists that you represent, how can they do that? Well, I only represent my own work now. That okay. was a transition. Uh, but right now, my work can be seen at LarryPonchoBrown.com. Uh, I have another one called RaisingTheArts.com, where we do uh, images for nonprofit organizations for raising funds. So those are the two locations where you can see my work. Well, and let me ask you this, too, because this thought just came to my mind. If someone, sometimes people will see art and they're like, I can't afford that. That's just way too much. And I notice you guys have prints as well. Um, how do, what's the difference between the two for someone that doesn't know anything about art at, at all? Well, our personal works are original works. It's a whole different category. And those are the ones that most people go to. They want and can't afford them. But right. that's how we started doing reproductions. It's all types of printing methods now. You can get posters. You can get limited edition pieces. And um, they range anywhere from $35 on up to as much as you want to spend, really. But when you start talking about original works, and this show has a, a higher level of original works here, which is unusual for a first-time show. Right. Normally, you would see a lot of posters and prints in this kind of environment. Right. But it seems like everybody stepped their game up to come to the show. So uh, we, we, artists have, have been used to catering to a lot of different people on different levels, entry level and people who have been collecting for a while. So it's something for $5 to as much as you want to spend in this building. So just bring your wallet, bring your mind. There you go. It's designed with you in mind. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that was excellent. That was excellent. Worked out perfectly. And what we're going to try to do with Insight TV, we're going to try to get stay in contact with you and some of the other artists and help bring more um, information and, and, and information, let people know about 
the art that you guys do? We're in the midst of a major art revolution right now that people really haven't taken the time to coin a phrase for. And so documentation is at the key of that because this movement happened, it's been going on the last 25 years. And people are just finding out about it, but the thing happened, it moved so fast that most of us didn't get a chance to really document it. And so multimedia, you'll see more books coming out. And so this part is important. I'm glad to see people are taking the time to recognize what we're trying to do because we really do it as a reflection of who we are. It's one of the few places you can go and get positive representations of who we are. Everybody wants to know what's the mystery of why black art has been surviving through all these pitfalls. Well, it's the few place, one of the few places you can go and get positive representations of every aspect of who we are these days. Where can you get that? You can get it in, on TV. Can you get it in the movies? You can't get it from all the music. So but you can get it from this, an artist that Well, that's what the visual it. realm is. That's why it's so important, because it, 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 it sends the message in a whole different positive way. Excellent, excellent. Well, that is enough. I'm not going to say anything else. That's actually perfect. Larry Poncho Brown, Insight TV. We promise that we're going to be bringing you more and more information on the arts all across North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and many, many different places. And we're going to stay in contact with all these different artists and try to bring more information to you. Insight TV, we'll be back right after this.